morning. I just did, finished up all my morning stuff, having breakfast, feeding Coop, all the things, taking a walk, blah, blah, blah. I've been packing up to head up to the mountain. I'm gonna hike our mountain this morning and do some more sketching. Last time I took oil pastels, this morning I decided I'm gonna take watercolor, which could be an epic fail because it's very moist out. I mean, it is just wet and damp and cold. So I'm also dressing extra warm this time. Last time it was like 50 degrees, but I still did not dress properly. Here comes Cooper. When I'm sitting on, when you're sitting on the ground, it's extra cold. If it's damp out at all, you're going to hear a loud oh, Cooper just laying down. So I want to show you what I'm wearing and what I'm taking when I'm packing. I'm packing extra light because I've got a pretty good hike and it's through very dense woods. So I've got to dress in a way that it, my my clothing is protected and then also I need light gear. I'm trying to go light. Okay, here's what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my honker doodle overalls. If you don't know what honker doodle means, it just means heavy duty. That's what it means. They're heavy duty. They're kind of waterproof, I think. They're really thick layered. They're super heavy, which may be a bad idea since I'm going to be hiking. It's going to be like I have 30 extra pounds on me, but we'll see. Let me get them off. So here's the honker, honker doodle overalls. They're very heavy. What brand? Because I know y'all are going to ask me. Here's the brand. Schmidt. I like them too because they're stretchy right here. So they're really easy to get on and off. But I mean, they're heavy. Whew, they're heavy. Hat. Fingerless gloves. I'm probably going to wish I had real gloves or full gloves, but... I hate having my fingers fully. This gives me, you know, fully covered. This gives me some wiggle room. So that, I've got multiple layers on. I'm gonna add some more layers on, base layers. And then let me show you what I'm taking, what I'm packing, instead of just what I'm wearing. Y'all probably don't even care about what I'm wearing, but I share it anyways, because that's what I do. Okay, let's go over here and look. I decided to take a backpack this time. Last time I just like took a, a bag that just was a strap over my shoulder and that didn't work too well. But in here, I've got clips oh i need to take extra clips yeah i can never have enough clips let's just grab some right now actually oh, there's none in there okay here's one mm, okay maybe i'll put that clip right here to help me remember to get some more clips i like to take a really thin picnic table what would you call this tablecloth because it's thin it's waterproof this has cats all over it's kind of funny it makes me laugh out there but that way i can cover the ground and my stuff won't get wet and sometimes like today i'll probably just sit on it like that uh, rolled up which is fine i've got um, this water bottle filled just halfway with water because uh, it's for my watercolor and then also in case i get thirsty i have just a couple sips so i can't get real thirsty in here, I have a hodgepodge of stuff. Well, let me open it for y'all. Okay, I have some extra plastic bags for things like my phone and my watercolor thing if it's all wet. I'm taking this empty watercolor tin. I'm taking it just for a palette. So I have extra mix, mixing areas. Oh, I think I forgot to say the reason I think taking watercolor today may be an epic fail is because I don't think anything's going to dry which means I won't be able to layer much, but we'll just, we'll just see. Some paper towels. I thought I had more paper towels than that. Oh yeah, I do stuffed in there. Um, a little spray bottle, a collapsible water cup, and this right here is an empty blush thing, but I like it because it has a little mirror so I can look at things backwards. Let me see if I can see y'all. And then I also have two sticks of charcoal in there. Uh, oh, there's some more clips. Awesome. Okay, so now I don't have to get extra clips. I'll throw that one in there. I have clips, and then for some reason I've decided to take two water brushes. I don't know why, because I am taking regular brushes, but those are there just for whatever. Okay, let's put all this back here. That goes in there. All that goes in there. Then I'm going to take three sketchbooks. I picked three light ones or light-ish instead of just taking individual pieces of paper because I do like my sketches to be in sketchbooks, but sometimes I don't want to carry heavy sketchbooks. I'm taking three different sizes and all of these have three different types of paper, which kind of excites me. And this paper right here in this sketchbook, what is this? 
Crescent, I would not recommend this because it doesn't open flat, which I don't really love. Um, and the paper isn't, it, the watercolor is going to really sink in. I did a little test this morning. It's going to be kind of neat though. I, I like that it doesn't really want to take watercolor wonderfully. That kind of paper creates interesting stuff sometimes. So those are the three sketchbooks. This sketchbook is one that was handmade for me. Actually, there's a few videos that that's mentioned in. This sketch is a Stillman and Burn Epsilon series. I'm taking this little tin of watercolors. I used my eyedropper this morning and put water in there to kind of reconstitute them. And I got them too reconstituted. Is that the word I'm supposed to be using? Actually, that that's not too soft but some of these are still really goopy so now I'm gonna have to be careful with it because they're gonna run everywhere so that really bugs me that I did that but uh, two yellows warm and a cool two reds uh, I've got some greens some very neutral greens here and a grayish I've got burnt sienna cerulean ultramarine and a black I always have blacks because it makes great greens actually I'm gonna leave that open so it will continue to dry I've got some brushes. I may regret taking the brushes that I'm taking too. These are basically oil painting brushes. They're like hog hair and they're super cheap. They're basically for kids. For most people, terrible brushes, but I love them. One of the reasons I like using hog hair brushes for my watercolors is that I don't use my watercolor very often. So it gets really dried up. If you've got a really stiff hog hair, you can just really get in there. I don't think I'm gonna need to get in there though for some of these. So then over here, these three brushes are softer ones. So I made it being able to use those basically a small variety and then if after I get all of this in my backpack if it's not too heavy I may take my color pencils you know what no I'm gonna go light sandy just say no say no I'm gonna set that over there that's all I'm gonna take so I'm gonna pack load the bag up put my honker doodles on say bye to that guy I'll put some more layers of clothes on and head out okay all geared up. I was gonna wear a Downs vest also, but it will get torn and snagged in the wood. So I'm hoping that this will be warm enough. Right now I'm sweating like crazy. Shoo. Can you see Coop? Hey Coop. Hey bud. So I wanna go. Mom won't let me go. Go lay down. You'll have to take a nap. We went for a walk this morning. It takes me forever to pack when I'm getting ready for something like this, but I really enjoy it. I have fun doing it, thinking about what I want to take this time. I spend probably more time packing than I actually do up there on the mountain sketching, but that's okay. And it always just feels like such an adventure, like I'm getting ready for a big adventure. It feels really fun. All right, now that I have a good sweat on, I'm gonna go hike the woods. Okay, I'm set up here on the hill. Look who's watching me, like he wants to get me. Oh, he just got camera shy. <laughs> We've met before, but I think he's like, you're not going to get my sheep. Oh, is he going to come over here? Okay, look, he came over. He came and pooped, though, <laughs> so it may get stinky. Look, I mean, he's right here with me. I mean, you cannot have a better painting partner than that. Oh, my gosh. So cute. Okay, I am absolutely freezing. My feet are fro, like, totally frozen. So, I'm going to call it. I don't, I don't. I don't feel like I've been out here very long. We'll see by the time I get back, but um, let me show you what I did. This was the first one I did. It was a little more realistic. I think sometimes that's a good way to start, like actually capturing real things. There's still some good abstraction in there. Then the second one I did was on this page where I you know, did those tests and I was already cold and tired. So I just did some quick marks, but I think sometimes these are the best ones to work from. And then thirdly, I did this one. I like this one, I think maybe the best. What I did was allowed myself, my eyes, to just focus in on all the little weird bits, not weird, but fun bits of color that I can see down there in the farm. It's just, there's always just kind of interesting little colors of things. And that's what I captured here. And then just some of the marks in the ground and some of the colors. These two are probably gonna be ones that I work from the most, but I've got to pack up and get home and thaw my feet out because they are cold. I'm back from the hike this morning. It was tons of fun. I would have stayed out there longer, but I was freezing. There is something about being on the wet, cold ground and I was wearing sandals. Anyways, it was cold. I did get three sketches in. I think one of the things that the cold makes you do is giddy up. 
So that's what I did. I want to show you some other paintings that I've been doing from sketches like this and how they come in handy. I am loving what I've been doing from sketches like this, loving it. I feel like I'm growing quickly. And then I also wanna to talk to you a little about, actually, let me just do it right now since I've got the camera on you, on me, not on you. I am loving what I'm doing right now. I mean, really, really loving it in the finished paintings. I don't love the sketches. Like I don't have expectations of them being good. I know what kind of marks I wanna get down and and I'm fine with it not being like this finished whatever because I know what's gonna come from those later. So it's kind of like getting a cake ready and just getting all the ingredients out and measured. Nobody really wants to eat that like that. It's nothing impressive. So for me, that's getting the ingredients together and then coming back and painting from those is the cake. <laughs> now, like, does that make, Granny's gonna be like, uh, what? So this is my point though. I am loving what I'm doing. I'm not only enjoying it, but I love the outcome. Like I really wish some of these were on larger canvases. I'm gonna do a large one soon, but I want to keep practicing and honing these skills because one, I'm growing really quickly. And the more I do this, not only will I have more to work from, but I'll have more practice and more confidence to do a big one. I wanna just kinda of keep doing it in this way. And then I'll also have a lot more cheaper paintings to sell because they're on paper, on and on. That's not the point. The point is one, or the main point is that I'm loving it, but I brought, I've been bringing Grady in to show him some of these. And I can always tell if Grady really likes something or not. He's not in love with them. And I've been wrestling with that a little bit. It's mainly because he's just not an abstract kind of person. And a lot of my work is moving more towards that. And that is fine with me. My mom and my dad are both like that too. They don't necessarily love abstract. I think my dad likes the loose stuff, but when I start going abstract, it just, for some people, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I'm good with that. I, I'm not really a big abstract person either, unless it's a really good abstract. There are some kind of abstracts that just, it's just a whole different ball field. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. So I wanted to chat a little about what that feels like to have people that I love and that I want their approval. And when I'm not getting their approval, when they don't love that, what that feels like and how I work through that. So it does feel initially a little disappointing. And then there's this kind of like, oh, I wanna make them happy and I wanna paint where they feel about it. But I also have to remember, they just represent a very tiny, a small part of the population. There's gonna be a lot of people like them that don't like the kind of work that I'm doing. That and, and that's fine. That's why there's so many different types of art. And that's what's wonderful about it. This just happened just last night even that I brought Grady in and something that I was like, I love this. I'd like it over the mantle. And he was like, I mean, I wouldn't be, what was the word he used? It was very interesting. I'm sitting here editing and I remembered what Grady said. He said, it would not be a travesty <laughs> if I put that painting over the fireplace. <laughs> we laughed so stinking hard. And I was like, okay, well, I won't do it. He goes, no, I said it won't be a travesty. <laughs> so I think at some point there will be paintings like that at the fireplace because that's where I'm painting. Non-travesty paintings. How about that for a title? I mean, but that's just how it is. We all like different things, and especially when it comes to art. Okay, I'm sitting We've here with Grady. So many He's times. watching the video. He goes, that's not what I said. Okay, what did you say? Off-putting. I think you said Travis. No. It would not be off-putting. <laughs> that's equal. That's the same. It wouldn't be off-putting. <laughs> I mean, that's not much better. I feel like travesty is much worse than off-putting. Okay, maybe one notch down. <laughs> I can't remember, but it was like, basically, he wouldn't hate it if it was over the mantle, but there wasn't anything like, you know what I mean? So I may go forego the, the mantle, right? Maybe I'll just paint like this, but I may not put one over the mantle. I don't know. So I've been kind of wrestling with that 
But at the end of the day, I have to follow the path of the way I enjoy making art. I have committed early on to not make art for just a specific audience or art that will sell. Now, I do think all these works will sell and sell fast because they are beautiful and there's a whole audience for this type of work. But I'm talking about people that are close to me and that love me and that I love them and that there is a desire in me that wants their approval. In fact, the fav Grady's favorite painting that I've done, it's a little more romantic and what would be some other words to describe it? Pretty. And that's just not the way I my art is moving towards and I, I'm okay with that. I've kind of had to work towards being okay with that. That's fine. I mean, it's kind of like I get pretty bored at, at his like insurance, what does he even call them? Like speeches at meetings, right? He's, he does insurance. I mean, it's kind of like, well, he doesn't find it boring and other people that do that kind of stuff doesn't find it boring. And so I just have to remind myself, he's not, when he says, you know, it's not his favorite. That's not a reflection on me. He's not saying you're not my favorite. And he also isn't saying your skill is low. He, he knows the kind of work I put into this kind of work. And he's also not saying this doesn't look like what I'm actually aiming for, which is joyful and colorful and abstract and those kinds of things. I guess at the end of the conversation, what I'm trying to say is be real careful about when others that are close to you, that you know you would want their approval, what they say about your work, be real careful to have a, um, a filter on that and to hear it and to uh, go, okay, well, that's just not the kind of work I'm doing. So that's how I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, well, I don't think the kind of work that maybe you would pick out and put over the mantle, babe, is what I'm painting and that's totally fine. I mean, there's definitely work that I do do that he would be fine with being on the mantle. Oh, did any of that make sense? Uh, sometimes I just want to share those internal struggles or because I know there are things that you guys are dealing with too. So I want to show you these sketches and then let's look at the artwork that I'm loving that Grady just feels oh, so, so about and that my dad will probably also be like, that's okay. I don't really get it, but, and that's fine. And like, I still love them and I do still seek their approval, but I also have to just put a little bit of a wall and not let those affect or make me start questioning the way I'm painting because I know, like I feel it in here, that I'm onto something and that the skill level is improving. And besides even just the skill level improving, I'm having so much fun. That's one of the reasons the skill level is improving is because I'm having fun and I'm painting and painting. I'm just doing it so much that your skill level cannot not improve. Was that good grammar? I don't think so. If you're working and working and working. Okay, that was my little speech. Let me show you some other sketches that I've done a while back in the same kind of way. Actually, I think these are of our house and I just was like thinking about the landscape around us and just making marks like that. And then some paintings that I love that I've done from that. So let me show you that now. Here are the two sketches I've been using. That one and this one. The first one was in inks and this one's in oil pastels. And I've used turp to kind of smush things around or odorless mineral spirits. So I've had these here like this. And then this is the one that I love the most. So there's that one. I love this. If this was on a large canvas, really large, I would put this over my mantle in a heartbeat, except for the fact that Grady does it. I mean, he's like, it's fine, but it's just not his thing or his style. I mean, the marks right here, the colors, the sky, all of it, I'm just thrilled with and love how it turned out. So that's my favorite one right there. And then let me show you the other one. I had these clips because these are on big pieces of paper. Where can I put you? There's number two. There's things I like about this one a lot too. I may not even be done with this yet. I haven't fully decided. I love the sky and how that turned out. Both of these were just made from using those two sketches 
and this one I used the last big painting also and again these are of my of our property of, of thinking about the pond and woods around it and there's a creek that goes around and just things like that you can see now how simple these were and because both of them are a little different like this one has a yellow spot here and this one doesn't um, the way I translated that in these so I just thought I would show you guys I'm really happy with it let me show you one more I did I did end up doing one on a canvas and I still don't know if I'm done with it I think that I am but in some ways I don't feel like I took it as far as some of the others I love this area right here this kind of wooded area and I do kind of like it in its simple colorful abstract shape that it is in this or in the abstract state that it is so I don't know it's just been sitting on my fireplace and I've been looking at it and thinking about it but I did want to show you guys I wanted to show you quickly how I'm starting some of these acrylic paintings I just put basically drops of the color that I think that I want and then I mix them together so let me show you get my big brush here and so I'm, kind of, I'm looking at this area right here and I put colors down that I just put big drops and then I'm going to mix knowing that I can always add whoops I should have had the top off this I can mix some more in there And it doesn't dry too fast, so it's it's fine for it to just kind of sit there a little bit. But I just wanted to show you that, how I make, put the drops, kind of think about the color that way, a little bit of white, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, mix it, and then I adjust it as I go. Yeah, uh, it's all still drying, but I am using this sketch right here as my reference. One of the things that I like to do is, this painting I did, I think mainly with paint maybe some inks but then I like to switch it and do it in a little bit different medium all right the battery died it's definitely a sign that I'm not supposed to be filming I'm gonna put the camera down we'll talk more in the future about this look at all these fun things I got quite a large shipment in everything except just a couple things are new there are a couple restocks but for the most part all new supplies all right, let's start with this Signet Robert Simmons, uh, what is this called? Egbert, I always laugh when I say that. It's kind of funny to say that. Really long bristles, and this is the hog hair bristles. I really like this brush because it's a little bit like my other long bristle brushes like this that I use a lot. They hold a lot of pigment, which I really like, so I like these stiffer bristles also so I'm using these some of the time not all of the time but I do like them and I wanted a number four so I think I have maybe three of these now I got some more of the Derwent ink tints this is a gift for someone and I just got a red yellow blue a green and a purple that I really like I love this thistle you guys know I'm not much of a purple person but this thistle is a really really nice purple besides the fact that it has a great name I mean thistle hello so I got those for a special someone then I also decided to get more of the color soft I'm finding that when I'm out and about sketching that sometimes I want to be able to put just a layer of something to either lighten or darken or change the hue just a little bit with either my inks or just whatever I'm using. This is the stash that I already have. Someone gave these to me and you can see I don't really have any yellows or I don't have any yellows. So basically I needed some yellows and some reds and maybe like another green. I actually ended up getting far more than I realized. I think what I did was put a whole bunch of yellows and reds in my basket and then thought I would go back and narrow it down. Well, I forgot about the narrowing down part, so now I just have a whole bunch. And I've placed them on order from yellows, reds, oranges, pinks, and I got a couple blues or kind of grayish colors and two greens. So we will swatch those later. Let me, well, I laid them out all nicely, but let me do this for you. Yeah, I got a lot of reds and yellows, but 
I mean, I don't know, maybe you can't have too many reds and yellows. Ooh, those are so pretty. Yeah, so now I have, now I have quite the range of these. They're kind of like soft pastels. They're in between soft pastels to me and color pencils. I don't use them like exclusively, but I have enjoyed the ones that I have. So that's why obviously I got some more. So there's those, put those over there. I don't want to mix them up because I want to make sure I swatch those. Maybe, wow, that's a big collection. I mean, do I have all of them now? <laughs> it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Hmm. All right, I also got a restock of my oil pastel fixative that I love. I went through that bottle quite quickly. This is good stuff. That's all I'm going to say. I do use this on wax pastels, oil pastels, Neocolor 2s, all of that. Anything squishy that could transfer. I do have another fixative that I like. This one right here for things like colored pencils or charcoal. This does a really good job too, but when you've got a squishy oil pastel, this is the bomb. A must have. It's not cheap. Uh, oh, speaking of that, I will have everything listed below with links to make it easy for you guys and to make it easy for me so you're not asking me all the things, but it's in my videos. Supplies are always listed below with a link. So we have that. Let's see, I already told you about these. Let's move those out of the way also. And that. I got two more of the Liquitex soft body acrylics. I was out of my emerald green, so I got another emerald green. So that's a restock. But then one of you told me about the green gold, which I'd had my eye on and somebody said this is a must have. So I got it. I think it's gonna be a little more transparent than maybe what I'm gonna like, but when it shows the color chart online and when white is added to it, it's really nice. So I'm hoping that this will be a nice out and about. When I say out and about, I mean because I've been getting out a lot more and doing landscapes. But I do think this is gonna be a good landscape color. And we'll swatch this later too. These tops are ridiculously hard to get off. I'm usually having to do surgery. I can tell pretty quick usually if it's gonna come off. No, it's not gonna come off. So I'll have to do surgery to remove that and then I'll show you that color later. And I also got two more colors for my acrylic gouache set. Now these are both Liquitex and they look very similar, but the soft body acrylic has the white top and the acrylic gouache has a black top. So I got another emerald green. I like this green for mixing. I, I never use it straight out of the tub, tub that color, but it is a good mixer. And then I got a burnt sienna because I have to have the burnt sienna. All right, we already did that too. You gotta move out of the way. All right, then I bought these two honking things of De La Roni, is it Roni? I feel like I'm not saying that right. De La Roni, Ronnie, I don't know, System 3 Original. I know some artists that use this exclusively, this brand. It is a little more matte or satin, that's why I got it. So I thought maybe it would go well with the Liquitex soft body acrylic that I use because that dry satin or matte, depending on which color it is. And I had an emerald green, an old one that I mixed, and I love it and I use it all the time. But the problem is, I did not write the formula down. I didn't write, did I, I know I added some like matte, medium, and white, but anyway, so I'm gonna try to uh, mix that. Let me grab it real quick. Okay, here's the mix that I did. I know I added white to it. Yes, it's got other colors in there because I dipped my brush in there and will contaminate. And then, Whoa, wow, you can see the difference. I hope that shows up. This is super dark. I feel like it's not showing up as dark on here. And then I also decided to try the lemon yellow because I go through yellow like crazy, so I thought I would try it. So we'll have to see if this is as strong. My gut is that this is not gonna be great, but it was so cheap, it was worth a try. And it's also really thick, so I'll be adding either medium to it, my matte medium, and some water probably to try to get it to a little creamier consistency. All right, there's those two things. And then I got a bunch more inks because I've been using inks like crazy lately, especially for my landscapes. And what I realized when I got this in, the one that I've been using a ton and I'm almost out of, did I remember to order it? No. Mm. I also realized that there's, they're both De La Roni, but one is a System 3 and one is this FW. I need to look up what the difference. I feel like one of them basically talked about, oh yeah, that it's opaque. 
So I think I would be liking the System 3 better. Can't remember, maybe they didn't have a lot of colors. I don't know, but let me show you the System 3 first. These are the colors that I got. This portrait pink, I can tell is not going to be as pinky as I thought. It almost has like a yellow look to it. Let's take the lid off. Yeah, it's kind of just creamy. I wish it was a little pinkier, but maybe when it dries. I don't think these change colors as much, but we'll, like when they dry, but we'll try it. Here is Cerulean Blue. Ooh, that is nice. I was needing some more blues also for mixing greens and for my skies. This is a phthalo blue. I love this phthalo blue. Oh wait, no. I have to say, I don't have any of these system three, so we'll see what that phthalo blue looks like. That will probably be intense. And then in the brand that I've already had, or not the brand, but in the series that I already have, the FW, I'm pretty sure that's what I already have. Yeah, this is the brand that I already have. This is, it's hard to find the names. <laughs> Trust me, Chris. Yeah, I don't know guys what the name of this is, but it's kind of an interesting orangey color. Oh, flesh tint. I did not get it for flesh. I got it because it's kind of orangey and I liked that. This is marine blue. I already have this and use this and I love this color. It's a really good mixer and it's really intense and bright. Then I got this, uh, what is this? Emerald green. This looks a little more intense than what I was hoping for. Yowzers. I'll have to be toning that baby down. That is intense. I mean, that's basically neon green. Then this is, ooh, what is this? Royal blue. Rony blue. <laughs> that's even better than royal. That kind of looks like French ultra, but we'll see. And then I got this and was so excited. This is called antelope brown but it's very green, like muddy green. Ooh, that's gonna be an amazing natural color. Amazing. I'm excited about those colors. We'll also swatch those and Lastly, I got this jumbo pad of paper. It's a printmaking paper. I've never tried printmaking paper, but I saw a pastel artist using it and she talked about how well it held up. It's really thin, but it's smooth, and it's smoother on one side than the other, but it's both smooth, but I think it's gonna be really nice. They have it in thicker sheets than this. This is 120 gram, but I thought I'd get the thin one first because I got more sheets. I think you should always go big if you can because then you can cut them down. It's just a better value. So I think what I'll do is cut a piece of this down and we'll test the stuff and the inks and stuff because we'll see how much this bleeds through the printmaking paper. If the ink does not bleed through this, then it's gonna be good because you just can't underestimate thin paper. Sometimes thin paper can hold a punch and it's really nice. So I was just thinking about when I'm out and about doing landscape stuff that this could be nice and I could cut it down and Oh, so I'm excited. All right, now the fun part. Let's get to color swatching. Yeah. I think what I want to do first is swatch the paints and the inks that way then I can play if I want to with the color pencils on top of all that so let's first start with this green gold Liquitex soft body acrylic because I always like to use the lid right here for my swatches I have a feeling it's gonna be quite transparent yep and let me go grab my white I forgot to grab white so I want to test this with some white also. It's kind of just a nice gold color, but I do think it can be neutralized well, and I do think it's going to be really pretty. Yeah, I'm glad I have that. All right, let's test watch this. Lemon yellow. 
got a better consistency than I thought it was going to. I do think it's probably not as potent, so it's going to be a little more transparent than what I would have liked, but straight from the tub, I like that consistency. Consistency is a big deal to me. Ooh, this is thick. Okay, again, yeah, kind of transparent. Actually, let's, normally I would mix on the palette, but I'm going to just mix on here. So that's basically the color of my den walls right there with a little bit of red added. So that's pretty. This feels a little thicker than the lemon, but maybe because I dipped into it a little more, I don't know. Okay, let's get into these inks. Another reason I like a long bristle brush like this is because with inks, I can really get into the inside a lot easier. This is the Portrait Pink, which I don't think is gonna be pink at all. Yeah, to me, this looks more flesh. That's very flesh. Maybe that's what it's called, portrait pink. Okay, that makes sense. Whoa, this is dark. But that could be a nice earth tone. And if I added some white to it, that would be probably better than just like a white, maybe. So there's that. This to me looks like it's gonna be like the same color, but just a little darker. <laughs> or gosh, is it gonna be the same color? I mean, that is basically, maybe when it dries, it'll be a little different, but hmm, that looks very similar. Which one was this? This is the flesh tint. Okay, here's what's interesting. This one's called flesh tint in the FW, and this one's called portrait pink in this system three. Bet you it is the same color, but this has some white added. So you definitely don't need both of those. Hmm. As that's starting to dry though, I'm liking that. All right, I really want to try this antelope brown. I mean, hello, Delaroni, Delaroni for a good name. I mean, I would buy anything that had the word antelope in it. I don't care what color. I do you feel like I probably have something similar to this in another brand? But we'll see. I do use this, oh, oh. That's way different than what I thought. It's kind of yellow. Yellowy brown, ooh. That's nice, wait, let me go get some, I wanna see what some white put into that looks like. Gosh, I, that's a nice color. Gets a little greener with the white added, wow. Yeah, I'll use that a lot. It's very transparent. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yep. Nice purchase, Mr. Antelope. We're happy with you. I'm glad I brought the white over because then I can just drop some in if I want to. I should have been shaking these some. Yeah, you should give these a little shake a -roo. Whoops. Because they do settle. This is going to be obnoxious green. I'm going to put this over here with the obnoxious colors. This color for me will definitely be something that I have to tone down. No if, ands, or buts, I can tell you right now. That's neon green. So what I would do for something like that, I'll use that, but what I would do is drop a little burnt sienna into it. That was probably a little much to neutralize that. And let's see what it looks like with some white added. Whoops, closed it. Oh, I should have been shaking this too. There's that. I'll keep this burnt sienna out because that'll be good mixing with the blues also. Okay, this one is, what is this? Roni blue in the FW. Okay, that's straight up the marine blue. We'll put the marine blue right next to it, but that's what my marine blue, I think they discontinued maybe the marine blue. I don't know. Yes. Okay, I didn't find the marine blue name, but then I saw this name and I was like, I bet they replaced that. So let me put a little bit of this in here so you can see how pretty it is if you neutralize it just a little bit. It'll turn it a little bit green. Can't wait to see if this is bleeding through. See how it kind of turns it green? And then if we add some white to it, See how you can just kind of mix on the paper? This is what's nice because then you don't have full control over it. And then you also splatter like that, which is kind of nice. Just a really pretty color. 
I feel like it's got a nice range to it. Like you can do a lot of stuff with it. All right, this is the phthalo blue in the system three. So I'm expecting this to be more matte. Okay, Sandy, let's do the shake. My guess is these more matte ones, you really need to shake well. So very similar to this marine blue. It's just a little more matte. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Yeah, nice. Very pretty. Now this is the cerulean blue, again in that system three. So let's give it a supersonic shake. Ooh, I can already tell this is gonna be pretty. Let's test it on its own first. Yep, just kind of a lighter version, a little bit of that. And let's add some white to it. Really pretty sky blue. And then we'll add some of this to it over here. Ooh, that was a lot, whoops. But you can see how you can get a pretty brown. Makes a really pretty brown like that. So that's everything except for the colored pencils. So I'm gonna let this dry, then we'll turn it over and see. I wonder if we can even just peek right now. It's actually not even buckling up. It's buckling up a little bit right now because that's so thick and because I'm wanting to try to move it. But this is not buckled. Okay, oh my gosh. And it is not bleeding. Glory, hallelujah. Are you kidding me? Whew, that's a paper worth investing in because if it's not even buckling that much and it's not bleeding with ink, people, ink. Okay, let's do the ultimate test though. The ultimate test is with the Higgins ink because the Higgins ink it really likes to go through stuff. So we'll test it. Paper, can you hold up to Mr. Higgins? We'll see, we'll see. And he can. We have a winner, people. We have a winner. I do wish I had left just a little room for just white for my color pencil swatches. I think what I'll do is use that other piece, swatch the colors, and then I can also play here on top. I mean, heck, that's just pretty right there. That looks like a little landscape, kind of. Okay, we'll go do the color pencils as soon as this dries. All right, I'm gonna just start swatching these and we'll see what they look like. I can tell this table's kind of rough, so I'm gonna put something underneath this. Okay, I got a piece of board. I didn't want all that weird marking. These are a little more color pencil-y than chalky. I thought they were gonna be a little chalkier. I actually did a pretty good job of like getting a nice range. Oh wow. That ginger, that's a nice color. That'd be a good landscape color right there. I'm gonna finish swatching and then I'll show you the finished swatches. They keep rolling away from me. I think I got a nice range. I'm like, go Sandy. I'm pretty happy with these. They, are, they do have chalkiness about them, but they go down easy. That's what I'm kind of liking about them. And they have really good pigment. Nice pigment. And it will be interesting to see how they layer. I'm actually not planning on using these necessarily like on their own, though I may. These two colors look exactly the same. Did I get two of the same? No, I did not. It drives me crazy when they look the same though. Wow, that deep red. Wow, that's nice. I won't make you sit here and listen to me ooh and ah over all my colors because I can totally be like that. Is it going to bother y'all that I'm not um, putting the num the names? Maybe I could at least put the numbers, but then I didn't leave room. Oops. I'm not, I know I probably, ooh, that's a nice pink. It's called pink and it's nice. Um, I'm not the, mo the best like color swatcher. I'll probably drive some of y'all crazy. I just am like, I need to get it on the paper and I can't take time to make it pretty and name it and all that. 
you know. I will write on here though. Oh, that's a nice green. That's better green than what I thought. I thought it was gonna be kind of neon. It's called lime green. Here I said I wasn't gonna make y'all sit here and listen to me, but now I now y'all are. I'm almost done. What was I saying? Yeah, I just kind of need, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, this is a nice green too. <laughs> Yellow green, man, those are two good greens. I think what I want to do is basically have color swatches like this that I can look quickly at the colors and I will basically know what they are. Like I can look at the tip of this and know that it's lime green and grab the colors that I want for that day for going out. I think that's what I want to do. I'm going to label like this is Derwent Color Soft. I'll label that at the bottom and then I can basically just look at the tip and the color. I think that'll work just fine. I don't know. I know. I know. Y'all are probably going to get all on to me. I'm sorry. All right. I'm going to go finish this. All right. Here's the sample that we did. It's definitely had some major buckling which that's no surprise at all to me. If you just sewed the back, it wouldn't buckle as bad, but it's really not a big deal that it buckled like that to me. I mean, these this is paper to just kind of play on, but it's pretty, you know, took a beating, if you ask me, pretty sturdy. And here's the color chart I did. Turned out so pretty, though I know I'm making some of you nervous with not putting all the colors together. So basically, I don't know why I did this. Did, this didn't make any sense, but I did all the new colors up to maybe about right here. And then I was like, oh yeah, I have the old colors too. So, so I didn't really get things in the right family, but it just doesn't really matter because if I get any more, you know, I'll be adding them and they're not gonna be with the right family. So I just am a big believer in like, let's not get too precious about things. Let's just get in there and have fun and get it done. So I did put the numbers though for you guys and for me, but that way in case you see a color on here you like, then you can, you know, get it yourself. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys, I did a little bit of a test. Wanted to kind of just play around with these before I got on here. And they layer up fine, but like you're not gonna get a dark color to go lighter with the lights. They just, I don't know if you can see that. It's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna take this lighter color right here. I mean, it just does not, I mean, it just does not do anything. So they don't really layer one another great as far as that goes. They're really beautiful colors. They go down really rich and vibrant. They go down easy. They're definitely not smudgy like I thought they were. For some reason, I thought these were gonna be kind of like pastels and they're just not. Like you can see, I mean, I'm going to town right there and it's not smushing. And then I did just a little playing around right there with a landscape. So what I do want to do though is take our inks and I want to take our color pencils. Let's get those out of the way. And I want to just play a little bit and see what we get. I think I'm going to tape these edges down though so it's not curling up so bad. This is automotive tape, but I've also bought artist tape before from Blick. Try to remember to link that below and it works really good too. In fact, I feel like it works maybe a little bit better than this. This is a little stickier. All I really want to see is how do they layer? Like, let's say I had a little spot here. Yeah, see, they go over that really nice. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah, and you can kind of smudge. Actually, now I wish I hadn't put the tape there because I want to be able to hold this up and show you guys. So let's untape. <laughs> Whoops, I just ripped the paper. So if I wanted like a subtle color shift there, let's see. Yeah, I really wanted these for kind of quick value changes. Yeah, see, I like that. Now let's see if we layer like a yellow over this. Does it make green? Can I get a green? Yeah, that does. It kind of makes it green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is exactly what I was looking for. You know, so let's say I had this kind of, I can't remember now what color that is, but kind of a yellowy. If it was just a little too warm, could I take a blue color like this? What color is this? This is cloud blue and change it just a little bit. And I can with that. 
and it's not gonna smudge around either too much. Hmm, wow. Here is a yellow green. Let's see if I wanted that to be a little darker. It's picking up the ridges of the thicker paint, and that's fine. But even this, look, let's say I've made this, this is kind of a black. Okay, or let's say I put this color down and I wanted to warm it up some. I don't know, you know how sometimes you just want to adjust the color just a little bit maybe? Or put some, you know, marks. I mean, I'm loving this little area. Okay, let's try just the white. I have not, I don't really like this white. I know a lot of y'all like the white because you've told me that. And you can't believe I don't like it. It's okay. I'm just not a big fan. You have to be careful when you add white in any medium. Things just look chalky. I mean, that, it just looks chalky. I would rather add, this is cream. That's what it's called. I would rather actually add some color to it or go with a lighter green. I mean, that's okay. It's just not... I don't know. For me, I just don't like adding white. I try to, even with my paints, I try to lighten a color with other colors instead of white. This pale lavender is gorgeous. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay, this is a great example. So if I wanted to lighten this just a little bit, taking this lavender would be better because it has color. It does shift the value a little bit, but doesn't make it chalky like this white would. For me, this this is gonna this looks like you've added chalk from the classroom. So you see the difference? And usually the white is too too stark. Also, to me, you can get away with it a little better with like lighter colors, but it still looks like chalk on top. You do have like a color shift. I mean, look how much better that is than white. I don't know, maybe y'all don't agree with me and that's okay, but this is just my opinion. That's, for me, I would much rather use that cream. I have a feeling I'm gonna go through that cream. This one right here, cream CO10. I would rather have that than white any day. It's nice and light, but it's got a little color to it. That cream goes over colors better than the white does. Wow, okay. Wow, cream, you are workhorse. We like you. I'm glad I got you. Hmm. Okay, that is our Durant Color Soft Test. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried these and what you think. I've got a massive collection, I feel like now, of colored pencils, and I don't even use colored pencils that much, but I'm I'm learning, I'm growing. I'm gonna be using these more and more as I go out and about more, so I'm really happy. Yeah, I'm happy with everything I bought. It was a really good little art haul. So I have my color pencils up here color coded in these jars and I put a big swatch of paint on there so people could, or not people, what am I saying people, so I can quickly tell what colors are in there. And so far I've just got them mixed with all the different brands. I don't know if I'm going to be okay with that long term, whoa, long term. And I do need to put a gray and a black swatch on those, but I did decide to add a white, white jar and put colors that are good for whites. I think that will be helpful. And then what I'm gonna do for my little travel pouches that I have also is do a white one. I think that will be really handy for when I'm out and about that I can quickly do that. Because you know, if you're just, if you're looking at like that one, it doesn't look white, but it reads white or it works as a good white. So there's that. Another little tip of the day. Okay, I'm jumping back on here because I just sat down to play with these some more and I found my top five favorites for lightening a darker color instead of the white. And I wanted to share those. So let me show you a couple of the examples here. So this square was quite dark, pretty much black, but like a colorful black. And this right here is the white. So you can see how kind of stark that is. This is the cream. And then these are some of the other colors that I'm gonna show you right here. So there's like a blue, I have a couple blues. There's a pink, kind of a greenish color. Now, obviously these two made them the lightest, but you can see how if you wanted to lighten it, the color, because it was like, you can see how dark it was down here. Played with those same colors over here, lighten, lightening things. So here is the blue, a blue that I'm gonna tell you about, a white, here's the lavender. Of course that makes it the lightest, but sometimes you don't need it that light. And here are the colors. So obviously that cream that I told you about earlier, 010. I loved this cloud blue. This was super nice. Probably the closest to the white 
to be honest. So Cloud Blue C360. Then there was another, well, I feel like this is kind of bluish, but it's called green. It's called Gray Green. It did a great job also, but wasn't chalky. You know, it had added some color. And then the lavender, man, this lavender right here, it's a workhorse. I love this lavender. I can't believe I'm saying that because you guys know I'm not a purple fan. Lavender C230. And then this pink was really nice too. And it's pink 190. So I would say don't waste your money on white. Get these so you'll have more variation and they will still lighten. And these, all these examples, I was just pressing so lightly. I wasn't going to town, but if I did want to go to town, I could get it even lighter. Okay, I see the pink right there. Let's do that real quick too before the camera dies. So, I mean, if you squint your eyes, that value is pretty much the same as that white. That's how you can tell, squint your eyes. That will help you with the value. So I just needed to get back on here and hook you guys up with these whites. That's my color pencil tip of the day. Okay, I better I better go on that note. I'm sure Grady's chuckling in the other room. He's hearing me. All right, if you're still here with me, this has been a long one, but if you're still here, I've got some footage from the very first time I painted up on top of our mountain in this same spot. It was maybe just a few days even before the one that you saw earlier. So if you're still here with me, here's footage that I shared on Instagram from that time up there. Hope you enjoy it. Good morning, it is 8.20 and I am up on top of a big mountain. It's our mountain, came to the very corner of it and uh, getting this really nice view. Uh, it's really windy, so we'll see how this goes. I brought a plastic picnic table, throw that down on the ground. I don't plan on being out here long. I'll show you what I brought in my bag. I kept it crazy simple because this was quite a hike. Some um, color pencils, my two small sketchbooks. <laughs> How funny is that? My oil pastels, one brush, and what that's for is this um, a small thing of terps, and uh, that way I can smush around my oil pastels. And then I've got some paper towels and clips for my sketchbook. That's it. And here's my view. We're at the very top. There's some sheep down at the bottom there and a donkey. That's fun. The first thing I wanted to do was just get myself familiar with the land. Decide do I wanted a zoom out, zoomed out version like this. And then I looked for big shapes and values and just put in that kind of thing and since I'm limited with color and value with my colored pencils that's kind of nice because I'm using colors maybe that I wouldn't choose so now that I've kind of let my eyes adjust I think I'm going to do more of a zoomed up shot of some of these or sketches of these um, trees possibly and then move on to the oil pastels I think I just really want to familiarize myself I haven't sketched here before and there's so in some ways there's so much and in some ways there's not much I don't know if that makes any sense, but just kind of want to, I can come up here whenever I want. Well, when the summer comes, I won't be able to get up here, but um, I can come up here all winter. So just familiarize myself, make marks, not worry at all about if it's good or not. It's just really about enjoying the experience. I will have some things that turn out good. And even the things that don't turn out good, I can make paintings from those too, because they will inform me. Right now, this is all information load. Here's the next one that I did. I decided, I, well, I started with these big trees and then there were just little bits of color down there that were catching my eye, like the tractor. And I don't know what these things are, but they're kind of cool and got some of the animals. That was fun. I liked how that turned out. May do one of those in oil pastel. I'm just letting myself capture anything that my eye feels a little about. And I just put it down. I don't like, I don't know if you noticed the barn. I didn't really want it to say barn, but I got some marks there. Your brain will read it as um, a barn. The sheep, I did an orange because that's the color I had in my hand and I like them better than if I tried to make them realistic. It's just a matter of capturing marks and layering them and not worrying too much about it, so. 
I'm gonna get back to it because I'm having so much fun. And what's nice is that I'm here on the corner of my property and if I need to go pee, I can just go in the woods really easily with nobody noticing. That's, I can't do that when I'm out like a nature center or something. But private property, yeah, man. <laughs> All right, there's my last one. I only did one oil pastel because uh, I'm getting cold. I did not dress for this, uh, but there's the last one. Okay, now I'm heading home via the woods. Uh, I'm hoping I can get home this way. I haven't been this way in quite a while, so we'll see. It's definitely not the easiest way home, but certainly the most fun. It's a big mountain uh, with tons of like bramble and stuff, briar that I'm having to walk through, but it is really fun. Um, I mean, there was a much easier path and I'm carrying all my supplies too, but it's fun. I wasn't sure where I would come out because um, I had not been that way before, but there's the house and here's the pond. Uh, so I think I'm gonna be good. I didn't get lost. I mean, not that I would get lost. It's not like that big, but whoa. I best, better concentrate so I don't fall down the mountain. All right, and just like that, I am back on, well, I was gonna say our property. That was our property too, but uh, heading to the house. And I can tell I've got like briars and leaves and stuff all in my hair, but oh, and it's muddy. Oh shoot, I just walked in a mud pit. That's okay. This was meant to be a get dirty, get down and dirty, hike through the woods adventure. It was so fun. I am cold though. I wish there was a nice fire going on at the house. That would be nice. Hot cocoa and a fire, but that's okay. Thanks for coming along on the adventure with me. It was fun. I just got home and I noticed like, do I have like a whole tree in my, house, in my hair? I don't know. I'm going to find all kinds of stuff. Hopefully I did not get ticks. I think they're snoozing for the winter. Let's hope. <laughs>